Okay, it looks like we're live. Welcome to the free quit drinking webinar. My name is Craig Beck from stopdrinkingexpert.com. And before we go any further, let me just say congratulations on taking action and actually doing something. And that might sound like a trite throwaway statement. You might be thinking, well, Craig, all I did was turn up to a webinar, big deal. But honestly, the vast majority of people who get into trouble and start worrying about their drinking never do anything about it. We live in this weird bubble of unreality around this drug. It is a drug that we don't even like to call a drug. You go into any bar and ask them how their drug use is going. <laughs> They're not going to spend a great deal of time explaining to you while you're wrong. So, oh, let's say hello to a few people before I forget, because it's on a side part of the screen that I don't see very often. So who have we got? We've got Nicola in Bradford. Hi, Nicola. I used to live in Bradford. Uh, used to run the radio station, uh, The Pulse. I'm not sure if it's there anymore. Uh, Layla Thompson, you're very welcome. TJ is here. We've got Jack in Nashville. Love Nashville. Um, Brian in New York. Uh, Amanda, thanks for doing this. You're very welcome, Amanda. Welcome on board. Uh, Taylor is here, says, I need this to work. It will, Taylor. Stay with me. I'll explain why. Uh, Bradley, 30 years of this needs to end. Uh, welcome, Bradley. Uh, Simon, I'm excited. You and me both, Simon. Welcome. All right, look, I can see lots of names flashing up. I know I'm going to miss a lot of people. I apologize. I'm not being rude. Uh, but let's just crack on because I've got a lot to share with you. In fact, I'm going to make a rather grand statement here. If you're currently worried about your drinking, if your use of alcohol is making you miserable, this webinar might be one of the most powerful, life-changing things that you ever stumble across. I know. That sounds like an overly grand statement, but hopefully if you stick with me for the next 30 minutes or so, I'll be able to demonstrate that to you. If you're here to get the free book, don't worry, it's coming. There is a copy of my best-selling book, Alcohol Lied to Me, waiting for you to download at the end of the webinar as a thank you for staying with me, okay? So here we have a drug that kills 3 million people every year. And yet you can buy it in Walmart. Here we have a drug that is the second most addictive substance on planet Earth, just behind heroin. And yet you can buy it everywhere. It's considered a treat. It's considered luxury. It's considered an indicator of your social standing. What nonsense. But that's the world we live in. Well, you know, I'm here today to tell you that if you follow my course, if you follow what I'm about to teach you, you will find it easy to quit drinking. You will quit drinking without any of the usual struggle, without any silly gimmicks, without any cravings, without willpower, without any of the usual nonsense. Doesn't that sound amazing? Go on, give me a yes in the comments. <laughs> Indulge me. Thank you very much. Now, how many of you are also thinking what I've just said sounds too good to be true? Go on, give me a yes in the comments. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, look, I would have thought the same uh, because I'm, re I'm realistic. I, I know that I'm not anyone's first port of call. You know, people don't come to me first when they try to control their drinking. They, they try on their own. And you will have tried countless times to moderate your drinking, to cut back, to stop completely, and you will have, have failed every single time. What I will show you in today's webinar, and this will shock you, is that you never really had any chance. You had a 95% chance of failure doing it your way. I know because I also did it that way and I also failed. What I'm going to show you in today's webinar is why it didn't work for you. And then I'm going to show you how you do it properly. In essence, I'm going to give you the proper tools for the job. So why should you listen to me? Well, I've been doing this 12 years. First of all, I fixed my own problem. And then I spent my time helping other people around the world. And there are now well over 200,000 people out there who are living happy, sober lives because of this process. You don't need to take my word for it. You can go to Trustpilot and you will see 1,500 five-star reviews. You can go to Proven Expert and see the same. This course is so effective 
that people are willing to ignore the stigma attached to admitting that you had a drinking problem, are willing to put their reputation and their face on the line to endorse and give gratitude for what the course did for them. Here's Fee from Australia. Before you quit using this process, how many times did you try and stop on your own? I tried numerous times. Um, I probably for the last five years I'd been really trying. Um, I did naltrexone. Uh -huh. I tried um, a controlled detox with the doctor using Valium. Uh, I did go to a couple of AA meetings, uh, but nothing seemed to click until I found this program. And what was so different about this? Uh, it was something mentally. It just made me realise that I didn't need alcohol and that it was causing all the problems that I thought it was solving. Uh -huh. And what have you seen change in your life since, since you started the course? I think the biggest change is a mental calmness. Um, anxiety levels have dropped dramatically. And I realised how much I was missing out on. Like, how much? And this overseas holiday that I'm currently doing now, I have done a couple of small holidays before and I just would have been wiped out a great deal of the time and not... And I'm so present now. Yeah. Yeah. And if someone who is in your position 19 months ago is looking at this video and considering doing it, what would you say to them? I'd say really consider this because it's different. It's it's different to anything you can find out there and it's it gives you real mental freedom from the clutches of alcohol. Thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. Fee was just like me. Bottles of wine every night for decades, couldn't control it. She's now chalking up close to six years in sobriety. Her life has changed so dramatically, which is fantastic. So what we're gonna talk about today, what I'm gonna share with you is we're gonna bust three myths today about problem drinking and alcoholism. Myth number one, that quitting drinking is difficult. And I do understand that, you know, too good to be true mentality because you've got a whole heap of evidence there to suggest that that statement that I just made is wrong. You've tried many times and found it very difficult to get in control of drinking. And like I said right at the start, you've just been using the wrong tools for the job. When you start using the right tools, that's when it just becomes so simple and straightforward. That's what I'm going to share with you today. Myth number two, what do you do when you've got a drinking problem? Where do you go? You go to AA, don't you? That's what everyone does. And what do they tell you at AA? They tell you you're an alcoholic. In fact, they won't even let you proceed in the course, in the 12 steps, unless you stand up and say, hi, my name's Craig, I'm an alcoholic. In fact, you must state that before you say anything forever. Let's talk about that because I'm telling you here and now, I will never call you an alcoholic because I'll never call myself one because I don't believe you are. It's really important you understand this. I will share this with you in just a moment. And myth number three, that life is boring without alcohol. I'm gonna shatter that for you today and explain how. But first of all, let me tell you a little bit about me. Like I said, my name's Craig Beck. Um, for two decades of my life, I had a severe drinking problem. Now, granted, for the first 10 years of that, I didn't know I had a problem. Indeed, if you'd come up to me and accused me of it or questioned my drinking in any sort of way, I would have verbally attacked you in the way that most drinkers do. I would have said things like, hey, I can stop drinking any time I like. And I would have believed it. Or I would have said, keep your nose out of my business. I'm only hurting myself. It's my body. I'll do what I want to it. Which, of course, is nonsense. We know that you know when you're a problem drinker, it doesn't just affect you. It affects everyone who loves you. All your friends, your family, your children, your parents, everyone. So that's nonsense as well. But that was my stance, you know. I didn't think I was a problem drinker. I thought I was just a very sociable man. You know, I was always invited to parties. Why? Well, because I was good value. If you invited me to your party, I'd turn up with extra alcohol because I would assume you hadn't bought enough. I would drink very quickly. I'd be very funny. Then I'd get a bit cheeky. Then I'd get lewd and rude. And then I'd fall over and hurt myself. 
I was the guy that they talked about the next day at the water cooler. I would hear it as I walked past. Oh, my God, did you see Craig last night? But I didn't care. I thought that meant that I was a party animal, you know? I thought that I was a man who could handle my drink, and I wore that as a badge of honor. Thought it made me a real man. <laughs> How stupid. So then after 10 years of this behavior, I noticed that I was socializing less, but still drinking the same amount. I wasn't drinking with friends anymore. I seemed to be sitting on my sofa or on my own, drinking the same quantity. That, that changed. Can anyone empathize with that? Give me a yes in the comment if, you, if you've noticed that about yourself. You used to go out and be sociable, but now most of your drinking's done on your own. Thank you very much. So I started to worry about my drinking. So having believed that I could quit any time I wanted to, I tried it and realized I couldn't. So then I started creating silly rules for my drinking to try and get back control. I said to myself, uh, I'll only drink uh, beer, never wine. Then I said, oh, okay, I'll only drink wine, never spirits. Then I said, well, I'll drink a pint of water for every other, <laughs> for every glass of alcohol. Then I said, I'll only drink on the weekend and, and, you know, I'll only drink on special occasions. And it's amazing how the smallest thing suddenly becomes a special occasion, isn't it? It's like, well, it's, it's the dog's birthday. Oh, well, we must celebrate. Get him some Merlot. He loves Merlot, that dog. Anyone else tried silly rules to control their drinking? It doesn't work, does it? Never works. Can't work. So I did that for about five years. Then I got serious. I tried everything. I even bought prescription medication without a prescription from foreign countries like India and places like that. God knows what I was ingesting, but I nearly killed myself with it. Honestly, nearly killed myself with this little experiment. I tried every gimmick you can think of. Nothing worked. I even went to AA. Made me drink more. Yeah, made me drink more. Tell you why in a moment until something changed, until I had this like penny drop moment where I, I realized that if I just kept approaching this the way I always had, it was always going to end up the same way, failing to control my drinking, exactly what you've been doing for however long you've been doing it. It's just I worked it out. Something just like a light bulb went on in my head. And from that point on, things just got so simple, so easy. That's what I want to share with you today, all right? So let's talk about this myth number one, that quitting drinking is a miserable process, horrible, just the worst thing to do. Let me try and explain to you why you feel like that. Well, as we know, there are two parts to the brain, right? There's the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. Most people agree with me on that. The problem is that most people think they're kind of two halves as an equally balanced, and they're not. Your conscious mind is really weak and pathetic. It's that voice you hear in your head that's always judging everything, always questioning, always asking questions about everything. Very vocal, very noisy, but very weak. But it thinks it's powerful. And it can only do one or two things at a time. That's how weak it is, right? That's why when you were a child, you might have been challenged to pat your head and rub your tummy at the same time, and you couldn't do it, or you could do it, but it looked a bit awkward. That's because there are no programs in your head for this strange thing that you're doing, patting your head and rubbing your belly. Why would you have a, a program built into your head to do that? So because there's no program, you have to do it with your conscious mind. And because your conscious mind is so weak, you find it difficult. Now, conversely, your subconscious mind is infinitely powerful. It's doing not one or two things at a time. It's not even doing a hundred things at a time. It's doing a million things at a time. Right now, as you're watching this webinar, it's beating your heart in perfect rhythm. It's controlling your respiration. It's controlling your body temperature. It's aware of all sights, sounds, noises, everything. Everything is under the control of the subconscious mind. But while it's infinite in power, it never questions or judges anything. Never speaks. It's totally silent. Why is this important? Well, because whenever you do something repeatedly, your subconscious mind tries to help out by saying, okay, look, 
he or she, she's going to do this often. So let's create a program, like a computer program, that's going to automatically run whenever we're in this situation again. This way, you don't have to use your conscious mind, and your conscious mind can be involved with other tasks. All right? So what's happened over the years is you've been using alcohol for various reasons. You've used it to relax. You've used it to socialize. You've used it to deal with anxiety. You've used it to get to sleep. And you've done it so often that the subconscious mind has said, okay, let's take that off your conscious mind and create an automatic program. Now there is a physical piece of meat inside your head that has been created to facilitate your drinking in these circumstances. Physical piece of meat inside. We could find it with an MRI if we knew where to look. So your drinking is a pre-programmed event in the most powerful part of your brain. Now, when you wake up in the morning and you say, oh, I feel terrible, I'm so tired, I'm so exhausted, even though you've been in bed for 12 hours, I I'm never drinking again. That's it. That's it. I'm stopping drinking today. And you mean it, don't you? You're determined. And what happens at the end of the day? You're drinking again. Why? Why are your good intentions not good enough? Why is your willpower so weak and pathetic? It's because that statement that you wake up and make, I'm never drinking again, is born of the conscious mind. You have put the weakest part of your mind into battle with the strongest part of your mind. At best, you have a 5% chance of success. You have a 95% chance of failure doing it this way. And this is how you've approached problem drinking and dealing with your drinking forever. It doesn't work. That's what I demonstrate in my course. That's why this is so successful. Don't take my word for it. I know it sounds too good to be true. I get it. Listen to what Janet has to say. And how does it compare to what mm. you tried previously? Oh, well, AA, I could give you lots of stories on that terrible um, experience for me. Yeah. Uh, another one going to a recovery center, and uh, it was a very nice one, but still it's, it's not the same as a decision of what the alcohol is doing to your body. Instead of using willpower, you know, you make the decision and the power is in your hands. Yeah. So it gives you power. And is there, a, is there a key message you've picked up from today that kind of resonates with you? Huh. Oh, there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know where to start. Uh, mm, I, I think mm, talking in person to a spouse, a friend, yeah. uh, you know, anyone in your family that you've, you drink alcohol with, just to let them know where you're coming from, mm -hmm. what you need from them. Yeah. So that was a biggie, and not having it in the home at all. Sure. Yeah. And if, if anyone's watching this but thinking, this sounds too good to be true, what, what would be your message be to them? Uh, well, when you try it and you feel the power and you feel like you're just on top of your life and like yourself and love yourself so much better than you ever have. It's just so worth it. Why did I waste all those years? Being in my middle 60s now, I wasted so many years drinking. Yeah. Yeah, wasting my life. Well, thank you for coming today. You were oh, awesome. You. I'm very proud of you. Thank you and so much. And lovely to meet you. Oh, you too, Craig. Thank you. Thank you. You know, Janet didn't even come to me until she was 67 years old. Now chalking up on three or four years in sobriety. And so don't ever think that it's too late to get started on this journey. One of the things Janet said to me is the thing that she let go when she started drinking heavily was ballroom dancing. That was her passion. That was her love. And at the age of 70 years old, she is now back ballroom dancing because of this process. That's how good it is. So let's talk about this myth number two, that you are a dirty alcoholic and you always will be. Because isn't that what they tell you? What's the international default answer to a drinking problem? You tell anyone you've got a drinking problem, what do they say to you? They say, go to AA. And you get to AA, and the first thing they say to you is they say, you're an alcoholic. And you can't progress any further in this until you admit you're an alcoholic. 
And you might say to them, well, if I stop drinking, does that mean I'm not an alcoholic? Oh, no, no. If you stop drinking, the best you can hope for is to call yourself a recovering alcoholic. How depressing is that? So people often say to me, Craig, why are you so down on AA? And I'm absolutely not. I think for the people that it helps, it's an amazing organization. There are wonderful people in AA. All I say is it didn't work for me. Do you know what the success rate of Alcoholics Anonymous is? Come on, in the comments. Give me a percentage out of 100. Is it 100%? Does everyone who goes? Of course not. But what do you think it is? Lower than 15%. Lower than 10%. 8%. 8%. That means that it has a 92% chance of failing. My problem with AA is, is not that people do it. And if, if you want to go to AA, go to AA. Fantastic. My problem is it is the default solution to alcohol problems, and it has a 92% failure rate. You wouldn't accept that in any other situation in life, would you? Be honest. If you went to your doctor with a bad leg, and he said to you, okay, he said, we're going to do an operation. Uh, we've, we've only got two options here, operation one or operation two. Um, operation one has a 92% chance you'll lose the leg. You'd say, B, uh, two, give me option two. Even, you wouldn't even ask what it was. You'd just say, give me option two. I don't want that one. And yet with alcohol, for some reason, you've got a problem with alcohol. They say, go to AA, even though you've got an 8% chance of success. And I think I understand why. You see, for a lot of people like me, and I'm guessing like you, you don't want that label. You don't want to be told that you're broken, that there's something weird about you. Because I'm a logic person. I'm a common sense person, and it's got to make sense for me to buy it, yeah? If alcohol is the second most addictive substance on planet Earth, and it is, and you repeatedly consume it, what is the logical conclusion of your actions? Addiction, right? So to label people who have got addicted to alcohol as weird, weak-willed, or broken is insane. It's the entirely logical conclusion of your actions. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. It means exactly what you expected to happen happened, right? To call someone an alcoholic because they got addicted to alcohol is, it would be like me coming into your house at night, sneaking into your bedroom and sprinkling itching powder into your underwear. And then the next day when I saw you scratching and itching uncontrollably, I come up to you and I go, oh, you scratchaholic. Stop scratching, you scratchaholic. Even if you stop scratching, you'll just be a recovering scratchaholic. You wouldn't accept that, would you? You'd say, Craig, you idiot. I'm only itching uncontrollably because you put itching powder in my underwear for some reason. <laughs> and the same is true of alcohol. The only reason you're here at this webinar is because you repeatedly drank a highly addictive substance. And guess what happened? You got addicted. There's nothing wrong with you. All right? So that's what we're going to go through in the course. You know, that was reason one why AA didn't work for me. I went to one AA meeting and listened to them all tell their terrible stories. And I left that night and I went and bought a bottle of whiskey because I thought, my drinking's all right in comparison. I think I'm all right. I think I can drink a bit more. But, the, you know, you go to AA and they say to you that you're so weak and you're so broken that you, you're not even strong enough to fix your own problem. You've got to give your problem to God or to the higher power, and he or she will fix your problem for you. So imagine if you're a, an atheist and you, you, know, you finally plucked up the courage to go to AA and you nervously go into this church hall or wherever it's being held, this community center, and you sit down, and then this guy stands up and tells you that the solution to your drinking problem is to give it to a mythical being that you don't believe in. Isn't the whole process dead? from that point on? Isn't it over from that point on? So 
Another reason that my course, I think, has been so successful is it, it deals in logic. It doesn't require you to have faith in anything. It don't require you to believe in a certain person, a certain set of principles, to do certain mantras or prayers or anything like that. This course is broken down into common sense and logic. I'm going to show you how you got addicted, how your brain got wired this way, and more importantly, how you undo that wiring. And it can be done easily. So um, let's move on to myth number three, that life without alcohol is dull. And I, I can totally understand if that's the way you're thinking, because that's how I thought. When I was in the middle of my drinking, I couldn't even imagine a life without alcohol. How do you celebrate your birthday? How do you celebrate Thanksgiving, Christmas? How do you go on vacation? I just thought this is, ins I can't even imagine it. But look, you're going to have to trust me on this. And in fact, speak to anyone who's done this course. Every single aspect of your life is going to get better when you stop drinking. Every area of your life will improve dramatically just as soon as you finish this course and get started on your own sobriety path. I don't mean a little bit better. I mean quantities of scale bigger. And I've been doing this for 12 years now, and I still can't find the words to vocalize how much I mean that. But let me prove this to you. Look, at the moment, if you're drinking, you are inside the bubble of unreality. And it all looks very real. There are things that you believe now that you believe with certainty. You believe that alcohol helps you relax, don't you? You believe that it helps you socialize. You believe that it makes a party go with a swing. All of these things are an illusion. They just seem very real to you. Part of this course that you're about to get started on, it's a, it's a bit like going to see Penn and Teller. You know the magicians? They come on the stage and they do an illusion for you. Uh, and you watch the illusion, and you're like, wow, that's amazing. Oh, oh, that's incredible. Magic. You label it magic, yeah? And then they come back on the stage, and they tell you how it was done. They say, oh, well, you know, we pulled the leaf to here. That trap door was there. This was already in place, and this is how the trick was done. No matter how long you live, you will now, from this point forward, never be able to watch that illusion again and fall for it. Even if you live another 100 years, you will not be able to see that illusion performed and call it magic again, because you understand how it works. That's how this course works. I'm the guy that ruins alcohol for you. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> Nobody wants me at their party, honestly. But that's why the course is so powerful. I'm basically showing you how the illusion has been performed. It doesn't matter. In the future, whether you say it a hundred times that alcohol helps you relax, you won't believe it anymore. Look, let me demonstrate this to you. The, the evidence is everywhere, right? We, when you're inside the bubble of alcohol, you ignore the evidence. Look at the words on the screen. Oh, I was wasted last night. These are all words apparently mean we had a great night last night. Did you hear about Dave? He got hammered last night. Sarah was slaughtered. My God, I was trashed last night. Go to the dictionary and look up these words. They do not mean something good happened. Look up slaughtered in the dictionary. It does not mean an amazing time was had by all. And yet, when we're in drinking mode, we ignore this. We even ignore the bartender who asks, what's your poison? We completely ignore the fact that he's asked us, what sort of poison would you like to drink? Do you see? It's an illusion. It's a complete nonsense. So many things are going to change for the better in your life. So many benefits are about to arrive. I'm going to share a few with, them, uh, with you now. But first of all, I want you to listen to what Mick has to say. Craig Beck helps you understand what alcohol does to you, how it works, 
on your mind, how it works on your body. I, I won't go into that, you know, I highly recommend, I always recommend him to anybody that contacts me through Facebook or just in general chats to friends. I just always recommend him because it's worked for me. It won't work for everyone. And you've got to be in the right mindset to do that. You know, there's 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 many methods out there, but I just this well here I am three years on, so what more can I say? It's not only I can't have alcohol anymore; it's I don't want it anymore. I really don't want it. Three years and a bit ago, I couldn't have imagined life without alcohol. Now I'm looking back and I can't actually imagine my life the way it was. Now Mick has quit drinking. He's so happy these days. He's lost a ton of weight. Unfortunately, he hasn't saved any money at all because he's now a mad cycling enthusiast. He buys all the outfits. He's got something like seven or eight high-end bicycles. So unfortunately, when it comes to saving money, I've failed Mick. But You'll find him in the secret Facebook group that I'll talk about later, uh, and he will tell you for himself he's just over the moon with his sobriety and how his life's going now. But let's just talk about that cost saving. How much is your drinking costing you at the moment? And look, saving money is probably the least significant, least important benefit on the massive list that is coming your way. But let's just talk about it because times are hard at the moment. Everyone's getting squeezed. So let's talk about what sort of money you are currently investing on, in this poison. If you're drinking one bottle of wine a day, that's about $465 a month. It's like a car loan. So over a year, that's $5,500. Over a decade, $54 thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars fifty five thousand dollars the average member of my course saves seven thousand dollars a year that they used to spend on attractively packaged poison for me these numbers are just off the scale don't forget i was drinking two bottles of wine a day for 20 years and that number on the screen that you see there doesn't include birthdays, Christmas, Thanksgiving, doesn't include those fancy bottles of wine you buy to show off to your friends, doesn't include any of that. My number is probably approaching $200,000. And all the time I was spending that money on alcohol, I was telling my kids that we couldn't go on holiday this year because daddy didn't have enough money. I was telling my wife that she couldn't replace her 10-year-old car because, well, you know, money's pretty tight at the moment. All the time, I'm spending like $12,000 a year on, on alcohol. It's crazy. So let me tell you what you're about to get when you get started with what is now the world's most respected and effective problem drinking solution. I'm going to give you my complete step-by-step -step course. It's worth $1,500 because you've turned up to this webinar. You're not going to pay anything near that. Don't worry about that. By the way, if, if you've got questions, just hold them for the moment. Uh, in just a few moments, I'll, I'll, we'll go through some questions. Uh, also, that uh, free download of Alcohol Lie to Me is coming up as well. So just stay there for that. Uh, you're also going to get my personal support. I am your coach. So that means if you have problems or questions, you contact me. You don't speak to an admin assistant or someone from support. I give you my direct contact details. You talk to me. I want to help you personally, all right? I'm also going to give you a library of my hypnotherapy. If you go to audible.com right now and you type in Craig Beck Hypnosis, you will see there are hundreds of hypnosis downloads. They're not just for drinking, they're for everything, like self-confidence, weight loss, um, career progression, uh, wealth mindset, anything you want to address in your life is covered. They're, they're like $20 each at Audible, but you're going to get them all. The whole library, it's worth $800. It's yours. 
if you take advantage of the webinar package today. That's included, okay? So that's there for uh, a value of $800. I'm also going to give you the complete collection. This is massive. This is huge. As you know, I've written a lot of books, and I've made a lot of audio books. They're all yours. You're going to get every single book and audio book I've ever recorded and written in the members area to download and use at your pleasure. But more than that, I'm also going to give you something that I call my inner circle upgrade. I'm not only going to give you my complete collection, I'm going to give you everything I write in the future. You'll get all my books in the future, all my audio books in the future, everything included. It's worth another 800, but they, that's just guessing at a number. It could be a lot more than that. You're also going to get 40% off all live events forever. So we've done boot camps in the past in New York, Nashville, Chicago. Uh, we've been to San Francisco, Toronto, Canada. We've been to Sydney, Australia, uh, Dublin, Ireland, London, England. So if there's a boot camp you want to come to as a bit of a refresher, as one of my VIP webinar members, you get in a 40% discount. You're also going to get access to the free secret Facebook group. It's a huge community of people just like you. And the beauty of this community is there's always someone there. Because it's an international website, if you wake up at 2 in the morning and you're struggling and you just need a bit of support, that's where you go. There'll be dozens of people waiting to help and support you. It's the most loving, kind, comparing, uh, and compassionate group I've ever seen. And it's free. It's included free. You get this course for life. This is not a 90-day course that then disappears. If you take advantage of the webinar offer, it's there forever. So even if you're 10 years sober, you'll know that it's there in the background as your safety net. You can always go back to it. And finally, I'm going to give you a cast iron money back guarantee because I want this to work for you. And the guarantee basically works like this. If you do the course completely and you're still drinking, get in touch with me. If I can't help you, I'll refund your money in full. That means there's no risk to this. This means that one of two things are going to happen here today. One, you're either going to stop drinking, or two, you'll get your money back. There's no risk on your part. So how much is this $6,000 complete package going to cost to invest in today? Well, it's not going to cost you anything near that. In fact, for the next few minutes, if you take advantage of it here and now, you're going to get that for two payments of $299. $6,000 worth of content and life-changing resource for two payments of 299 There will be a green button to the right of your screen right now. Click on it and get started. And I will see you inside the members area to get started on this amazing journey to sobriety that so many others have done. So uh, the ebook download is coming. Stay there. You will see it at the bottom of the screen. Uh, first of all, uh, let's just answer a couple of questions. Um, oh, uh, well done to Nicola. Nicola's on board and in the course. Nicola, I will see you in the members area shortly. So what have we got here? Uh, James, how much time does this require? All right, James, look, the way this works is the course is time delivered to you. Because what I don't want you to do is to binge on it. I don't want you to do it all in one day because you're going to remember about 5% of the course if you do it like that. I want you to do it day by day. You didn't get this problem overnight. The drinking problem didn't appear one week or one month or even one year. This took a long time to develop. And so the course is time delivered on a daily basis. It'll take you about 30 to 40 minutes every day to do the, to do the work. However, that doesn't mean you have to do it every day. If you've got a very busy diary, then you might not be able to give 30, 40 minutes a day. I get that. And the course is designed for you to work completely at your own pace. Just try and stick to that principle of doing it one day at a time. Okay? So I hope that helps. Linda, uh, is this harder to do if you live with another drinker? Um, 
Yes and no, Linda. It kind of depends on your mindset. Um, what I always say to people who live with another drinker, especially if they're a problem drinker, is you need to have a serious sit down with them and talk about why you're doing this. All right. Do not try and get them to come on the journey with you. Honestly, the harder you push them in this direction, the harder they're going to pull away. Think of this as a tightrope walk. You're going to do it on your own. There's only room on the rope for you. Now, your husband or your wife, they can follow behind if they want to, but that's their decision. Don't badger them to try and do this with you, all right? They'll resent you for it. But I do think you should have a serious sit-down conversation with them where you explain to them how miserable alcohol has been making you, and you actively ask them for their help. Get them, get them to verbalize their agreement to help you, all right? So this isn't a conversation you have while they're, they, you know, they're, they're going past you on the way to work. This is a sit down, look, I need to explain something to you. And then I want you to ask them if you can have an alcohol-free home. It's so much easier. It's so much easier. Now you say to them, look, I don't need you to stop drinking. You can drink as much as you want. You can go to the pub. You can go to the bar as often as you want. But can we have an alcohol-free home? I think something like 50% of partners will say, I love you, supporting you. Yes, I agree to that. The other 50% are firmly in the bubble and they will say, absolutely not. You're not spoiling my fun. You be miserable if you want to. <laughs> so if you're with the, you know, the bubble 50%, I suggest then you ask for a compromise. You say, okay, I hear you. Can we have an alcohol-free home? for a couple of weeks, a month, just while I get started. And again, I think 50% of those people will go, okay, well, yeah, I can live with a month. Yes, I will do that because I love you and I care about you. And the other 50% will say, absolutely not, outrageous, not even for a minute. And if you're in that camp, I think you maybe have bigger problems than you're drinking. <laughs> but most people will, most partners will try and help in, in some way. Uh, but it is easier to do it if your partner's not a, not a heavy drinker, um, it's easy to do it if you don't have a house full of alcohol. Um, but it's not impossible if, the, if you don't have that luxury um, because your mentality around alcohol is going to be changing. It, it's not going to be like you did it before. This is not you depriving yourself of something. This is you changing the way you think to the way you think about heroin. It wouldn't matter if you were in a room full of people doing heroin. You wouldn't be tempted, would you? You wouldn't be tempted to get a needle, stick it in your arm, and inject heroin. Why? Because your programming is perfectly aligned around heroin at the moment. We just know that alcohol, the programming, is wrong. We're going to fix that, so don't worry about that. Uh, last couple of questions. Um, Brian, what if it doesn't work for me? Oh, you skeptic, Brian. Uh, no, good question. Look, and it doesn't work for everyone. It's impossible. It's impossible for it to work for everyone. But what? look, what I'll say to you is if you follow what I do with 100% passion and commitment, it'll work. If you skip bits and you go, ah, yeah, I'm not interested in that, or you leave that bit out, uh, the chances of it working drop dramatically. If you do everything I say, you will stop drinking. In fact, about halfway through, no, about two-thirds of the way through the course, I share something with you called the four things. The four things are a, a, a process to deal with cravings to drink. And I'll go on record as saying, if you do the four, thing, four things, you will not drink. So it's not really a question of whether you drink or not. It's whether you do the four things or not. 99.9% .9 of the people who've ever emailed me saying, Craig, I drank last night and I asked them, did you do the four things? They said, no. So I know for certain, if you do these things, you won't drink. The only question here is, will you do the four things? But anyway, look, Brian, um, was it Brian? Yeah, Brian, if it doesn't work for you, there's this guarantee for you, right? Here's how the guarantee works. The only thing I ask for you to qualify for the guarantee is you do the course completely. You do every day, you do all the homework, and you do it in its entirety. If you do it all and you're still drinking, get in touch with me. If I can't help you, I'll give you your money back. But the only thing I ask is that you try. 
All right. So I hope that helps. So if you want the ebook, if that's why you came, then here is your chance to download it. And I'll leave this offer on the screen for another 60 seconds. You have now have 60 seconds to take this opportunity. And I'll close now and say thank you so much for spending your time with me. I really appreciate it. And I'm very excited to take you on this amazing journey that has helped so many hundreds of thousands of people. I'll see you in the next few minutes in the members area. Thanks a lot and goodbye.